Residents of the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja have called on the police to investigate the killing of 23-year-old Orucheju Jackson. Orucheju was stabbed during a night out with his friends in the city center. Well, our senior correspondent Ferdinand Dura has this report for us. In his family home, candles are lit in his honor. Loved ones who had hoped he will leave to fulfill his potentials and aspirations mourned. Torishedu Emmanuel Jackson was 23 years old when his life was snuffed out by yet-to-be-identified killers. The Buckingham University School lawyer only returned to Nigeria earlier this year to participate in the mandatory National Youth Service Corps and attend Nigeria's law school, both requirements to become a legal practitioner in the country. But all that now are parts of lofty dreams unfulfilled. The circumstances surrounding his death have left some pertinent questions unanswered. Torishedu had gone out with a friend at about 10.45 p.m. on Saturday, the 11th of September. His family say they received a call at past 9 a.m. on Sunday, the next day, that he had been involved in an accident. His friends, whom he had gone out with, alleged that he was stabbed by unknown persons in front of a hotel in Wusezon 4, where they had visited. His father tells us more. And I got called that Sunday morning that Toju was involved in some accident and that it was serious I should come back. I was running a program somewhere out of town. So I came back and we drove straight to the hospital, Garaki General Hospital. At the point I got there and I asked, where is Toju? They just told me, it's in the mark. It was unbelievable. That set the most imaginable reality inside of me because I spoke to Toju, I spoke to Toju the day before, and it was fine. So what happened? They said a friend came to the house at midnight to pick him, and they went out. And I think they had a stopover to see some of their other friends at the top-ranked hotel who said to. And as he was coming out of the hotel, he was encountered by, I don't know, these people who killed him. So Toji was stabbed to death. Between that time that this incident happened, until the time that we got involved, Toji was left in the car outside bleeding. There was no help. Nobody. The hotel did not call the police. Neither does his friends. So he died, and we only met him at that point. He was still even in the car, one wretched car, at the uh, hospital before he was taken to the morgue. What got me so jammed up, to be very honest, I went to the crime scene. They said Tuju ran back into the hotel, into the room, after I was stabbed. And that was the next day. I saw that the hotel was running as if it's usual, blood cleaned up. I went upstairs, you know, I, I, I walked through the staircase for a boy who was stabbed and bleeding. He walked up to the room and then by the next morning, there was no trace of anything, no sympathy. They just cleaned up and business was on as usual. For me, I think every hotel in Nigeria requires a minimum standard of security. Proper lightning outside the environment and all of that. Toju has been buried with a service of songs and a road walk by some of those who fondly remembers him. He was just himself. He didn't form for anybody, he didn't carry his shoulder, he was just himself. He had a way of just making people endear people to him, you know. So that's why everyone here, that's why there's such an apple of love. Toji impacted lives in so many beautiful ways in the sense that you could have been a friend or a friend of a friend or a friend of the family, but however it might have been that you experienced Toju, it was something that was worthwhile. So I'm not surprised to see this amount of people here respecting 
you know, Toju's passing and just, you know, being here to just celebrate such a beautiful and well-lived life. The outcome of today is a manifestation of Toju's love for people. Toju wasn't a classist. Toju saw everyone. He really saw everyone. And I'm so proud of the amount of people that have come out today because it really shows that Toju is here, Toju is seen, Toju is loved. Toju loved, though, but Toju is loved. Mr. Jackson laments the rate of crime in the FCT and demands justice for Toju. Well, I'm deeply pained, saddened that there's a failure in some part of the security measures in the, in, in the country, particularly in FCT. If an incident of this sort happened between 4 a.m. to 5, and there was no police intervention, either as a result of the hotel calling on the police or the police doing their regular patrols, this situation would have been rescued because, you know, this boy bled to death. And if there was intervention, if there was any kind of help, this situation would have been remedied or seen to be remedied. But there was absolutely nothing was done. Nothing absolutely was done on the side of the hotel and on the side of the police. Arise News twice visited the hotel in Wuse, where Toju visited and was killed in front of. We sought unsuccessfully to speak with the manager. Attempts to reach him or have him reach us on the phone have also not been fruitful. While the FCT Commissioner of Police Babaji Sunday in a statement by the PRO has assured the public that the command will be professional, fair and thorough in its investigation, there are some pertinent questions begging for answers. Why did Turishedu's friends, who came to his house to pick him the night before his murder, not inform his family after the attack? Was it appropriate for the hotel to have cleaned the blood stains, traces and the room where the victim entered after the attack before inviting the police? And how professional was the police by moving the body from the crime scene and attempting to put it in a morgue before contacting the victim's family for identification? Now, These are some of the worries and allegations made by the victim's friends and family. But beyond the researchers killing, residents of the FCT will hope that the heightened crime rates in the capital will be addressed soonest. Ferdinand Duroha, Arise News.